Tonight, we look at improvements coming to the city of Pullman. And the latest effects of winter in Pullman. And the government approves funding for Trump's wall. Murrow News 8 starts now. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Ryan Peerboom. And I'm Elijah Clayton. Welcome to Murrow News 8. The state of Washington continues to feel the impact of this record winter. Snoqualmie Pass experienced record-breaking snowfall uh, on Tuesday, but remains open today. The pass is still covered in snow, and traffic is slowly moving. In Pullman, the snow caused six accidents and disabled four vehicles. The university is operating as usual, without delays or cancellations, despite the inclement weather. And despite the school operating normally, the snow is wreaking havoc on transportation in Pullman this morning and into this afternoon. Joining us live from WSU campus, Noah Schmick has updates on some weather-related transportation news. Hey, Noah. Hey, Eli. Uh, people all over the WSU campus and across eastern Washington woke up to snow flurries that were making transportation difficult for all the drivers out there. The Pullman streets had already been covered by a thin layer of ice from last night before the snow started falling, before the snow started falling this morning. According to the National Weather Services, temperatures dipped into the high 20s last night and made any melted snow freeze over. The Pullman Transit alerted residents on Twitter last night saying that two of their routes were running behind schedule. The lentil route was running 11 minutes behind and the wheat route 22 minutes behind. Then, a few minutes after 9 o'clock, Pullman Transit tweeted out that the Paradise route was not running after being involved in an accident. Making conditions worse this morning is the wind gusts that are blowing snow straight into my face. And it's been really cold out today, but of course, as you can see behind me, the buses are still running, everything is going well, um, and, and we're hoping that uh, some warm weather will come about. Eli, back to you at the desk. That's Noah Schmick reporting live from the WSU campus. Thanks, Noah. Pullman wants to make downtown more inclusive for its residents. The Downtown Pullman Association has $1,000 set aside for this project within the next five to 10 years. They want more business awareness and to see more students come hang out at the new parks. The city of Pullman is set to spend $450,000 to replace water and sewage lines as well as fixing roads like Summer and Autumn Street. The City of Pullman Public Works Director, Kevin Guards, says there have been three breaks in the water line on both Summer and Autumn Street in the last 10 years, making the construction necessary. There's no set timeline, but construction is set to start in April or May and finish by September 14th. The City of Pullman bought six acres of land and two buildings for a new recreation and senior center set to come this fall. The construction and renovation of both buildings will cost $5.5 million. Pullman Recreation Superintendent Kirk Dahman said the funding for this project is coming from a bond approved last February. The Pullman School Board has officially promoted Franklin Elementary School's interim principal to the position permanently. The board approved the promotion for Stephanie Bray during its meeting Wednesday night. Bray was selected out of three finalists for the job. And when we come back, a look at the hardworking elements, uh, hardworking EMTs of Pullman. But first, Eli will tell us the local forecast. Stay with us. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm, nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org.
So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Dad's home! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play more. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Welcome back to the show. So as if you looked outside today, you saw that we had some crazy weather this morning. Uh, today, we're going to be, we're in the mid-30s. We had that snowstorm that came in earlier. I'll have more later on in the show about that. Uh, we're going to drop below freezing tonight. Um, and it's going to get icy, so you're going to want to watch out. And moving on to tomorrow, uh, we're going to be around freezing and then drop well below freezing tomorrow night. Again, watch out for ice while you're walking around, driving, going anywhere. Moving on to the state map, you see uh, Olympia and Seattle, uh, the west side's back to their normal winter, uh, kind of rainy. Then you got the, the Tri-Cities and Yakima. It started off cloudy, but you know, uh, it, there's a chance of freezing rain. So you're really going to want to be careful going anywhere, and that's true for most of the east side of the state. Uh, because of the weather that we've been having, you've got snow on top of ice, and it's it getting kind of dangerous. So we move over, and we look at Spokane, and we look at Pullman, uh, and you see that we're going to have snow in the forecast for the next couple of days, um, and it's going to be mid-30s, but it's definitely going to get below freezing. And if we move on to the five-day forecast, you can see... Friday, so today we're mid-30s, we go below freezing, and then after that we hover around freezing and go below freezing for most of the rest of the week, all the way up to Tuesday. And so you see more snow in the forecast, and again, I just want to emphasize, be careful on the roads. We've already had a lot of accidents um, on this east side of the state, um, traveling back and forth, Spokane, Pullman, and if you're going back to the west side for this long weekend. Um, so as you can see, it drops down below freezing for the rest of the week. Uh, and that's all I've got for weather now. So back to you at the desk, Ryan. People in Pullman may not think twice about how long it will take for an ambulance to reach them in an emergency. Malou Santos has more on why people in rural commu communities work as EMTs for free. I lost somebody dear to me in a tragic car accident. Julia Stapleton said she became an unpaid EMT in Nez Perce, Idaho after a catastrophic event involving her family. It was my mother-in-law and my son was actually in the car when uh, the vehicle had wrecked and she had passed away at the scene, but my son had, had made it and he was about five years of age. If you lived in Pullman and had a medical emergency, you probably wouldn't think about how long it would take for EMT to get to you. Nez Perce has a population of less than 500 people. The town has one clinic available to its residents three days per week. If anyone in town had a medical emergency, that patient would be treated by unpaid local EMTs. Only 80 EMTs, and then we have some drivers that volunteer, but it's pretty busy. People in Nespers need to travel almost 60 miles to Lewiston if they experience major trauma. The ride still takes about 45 minutes in an ambulance. Another option is a helicopter ride through Life Flight, but that costs thousands of dollars in addition to emergency medical expenses. We feel really lucky to have that, very, very lucky, and you know, you just hope that people have the have bought the insurance. Patty Barnett has volunteered as an EMT for over 15 years. She said she did not become an EMT for the money, but rather to help her community. In rural EMS, you do it because you you have a passion to do it, and you care about people, and you care about helping people. Nest Purse EMT volunteers don't mind if they receive a paycheck or not. They do their job to lend a helping hand. This is my way of helping and giving back. Malou Santos, Murrow News 8. The Washington State University Board of Regents approved a settlement that could be worth up to around $5.3 million for a class action lawsuit. The lawsuit is in response to a data breach that occurred around two years ago, according to the Daily Evergreen. The on only a draft of the settlement was approved, but it should be finalized within the next 60 days, according to WSU Vice President of Marketing and Communications, Phil Weiler. 
Lawmakers in the state of Washington look to pass a bill making libraries, parks, and other child care facilities gun-free zones, even with concealed weapons and permits. Schools, courthouses, and airports have already been gun-free zones for years. Opponents of the bills say this could make children's, children less safe by making children targets in places where criminals know nobody will, nobody will be armed and able to stop them. Public libraries of Washington are, were concerned about possible impacts of the bill, such as having to hire security or purchase metal detectors to enforce the no weapon policy. The committee decides whether or not to advance the bill in the coming weeks. A convicted triple murderer in Moscow has had the latest appeal of his conviction denied yesterday. John Lee was convicted of murdering his mother, landlord, and manager at Arby's during a 2015 shooting spree. Lee was attempting to withdraw his guilty pleas as he claims he was psychologically coerced into pleading guilty in a, order to avoid a life sentence. This is the fourth time Lee has had an appeal denied. The government avoided another partial shutdown yesterday. Congress approved $1.375 billion for border security. The deal included 55 miles for a border wall, more immigration judges, and improved technology at the U.S. and Mexico border. President Trump wanted $5.7 billion to fund the wall, but he is expected to sign the deal today. Trump is also expected to bypass lawmakers by declaring a national emergency, allowing him to shift money from other federal funds to eventually complete the wall. Washington State Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers and Senator Patty Murray both voiced their disapproval of President Trump's methods for securing funding for the wall. McMorris Rogers said, quote, while I share the pres uh, why show President Trump's concerns about the important need to secure our southern border and his frustrations with Democrats' refusal to keep our country secure, this is not the right approach to achieve our shared goals, unquote. Senator Murray calls the situation at the border, quote, a manufactured crisis and said that the president was abusing his power. Oh, that weather is really something crazy. Yeah, when I walked in the studio this morning, I had snow about an inch on my shoulders. Yeah, it was hitting me in the face, and I, I had a little trouble getting to campus. Yeah, I was sliding around everywhere, saw multiple other cars sliding around. The, the six accidents definitely don't surprise me. No, and, and that's why we really got to emphasize being safe. Exactly. When Murrow News 8 returns, we look at mental health and WSU Greek life. And Nathan Simp gives us our sports update. We'll be right back. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. We finally bought a place. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. So at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. How is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. 
Two Greek chapters on the WSU campus have partnered with the Community Health Association of Spokane to provide mental health counseling services for their members. Kappa Alpha Theta and Delta Sigma Phi reached out to the association after realizing their members were not receiving the mental health care they need. A counselor will visit each chapter once a week and eventually the members will also be able to request an appointment over the phone or by video chat. Now Nathan Senf joins us with our sports update. Nathan? Well, WSU has a lot going on in the sports world this week and into next week. Uh, WSU women's basketball is looking to sweep UW in the Boeing Apple Cup this evening at 7 p.m. for the first time since 2014. The last time WSU played against UW was in December, where Boris Lava scored over 38 points of the game. So far, the Huskies have lost seven straight games, and WSU is looking like they will make that eight. Then we go to the men's spo sports. WSU men's basketball is also taking on UW on Saturday at 5 p.m. WSU men are facing now for the second time the se in the season the Huskies, and WSU is trying to finish the week with a split season against them, and the Huskies look like they have an advantage, though. The game will also be televised live on ESPNU. Now on to football. WSU Athletics announced Thursday afternoon that Martin Stadium will host a crimson and gray football game on April 20th to support mental health awareness. The athletics department has been working with student organizations like ASWSU to promote mental health after football player Tyler Holinsky died by suicide last year. The tickets for the game cost $5 for general admission or $10 for Cougar Athletic Fund sponsors. All the proceeds go to the ASWSU Cougar Health Fund. And then we go to WSU Women's Tennis, who has been 7-1 to one record this year and is traveling to Purdue, Purdue on Saturday for a dual, dual match. Last year, Cougs won against Purdue 7-0. to zero. This year, they're looking to be good, and the ITA rankings this weekend place sophomore Michaela Barilova in spot 63, senior Tiffany and Malonis, and junior Melissa Eitz at 115. Women's Tennis started the season strong and is looking to win big this year. And then if you talk about waves, we're going to WSU swim team. They're welcoming Utah to sw swimmers to the Gibbs pool this Saturday for their final dual meet of the season. This meet is also honoring the only senior swimmer, Linnea Lindbergh, and Utah holds an advantage this year. And the Cougs are trying to steer off from having another loss. And they're up in the improvement rate by t the 22nd approval rating and has an 82% improvement record. This is above the Utes 27th. Then we go out to the golf course, and WSU's men's golf took fourth place at Ant Eater Invitational Tuesday in Newport Beach, California. Junior Dan Kalar led, by, led the Cougs by finishing in the top 10 and eighth in shooting. Senior Grant Cole was 14th in team, and senior AJ Armstrong took 20th in shooting. Just one stroke behind him was junior Nicholas Kayam, who took 22nd, and then came Scott Riddlesberger in a tie for 29th. Coach Justin White said that fourth is good, but shows what we can, as a team, work on. WSU men's golf heads to Hawaii for the John Burns Intercollegiate Tournament, February 21st through the 23rd. Okay, it's every baseball card lover's dream, an original Babe Ruth. Now a California man says not only did he find one, but he bought it for only a couple of bucks. Jeremy Roth has a story. Call it a great deal on the great Bambino. A collector scored big when he nabbed an okay. ultra-rare Babe Ruth baseball Kay. card for next to nothing. Dave Ball was visiting a card shop in Nevada when he found it. He says the owner thought it was a fake and sold it for just $2. Ball says an authenticator has since confirmed it's a rare 1921 card possibly worth millions. I didn't even know what to say. I had tears start running down my face. Ball says he's already received three multi-million dollar offers, but has refused to sell. He says if he does decide to cash in, the collector who sold it will get a cut. I know what I'm going to do, because what comes around goes around, and that man deserves it. Okay. So, uh, those Babe Ruth cards, uh, I've never found one. Have no, I, I'd only hope to be lucky enough. I will say, as good as he was in his day, I would love to see Babe Ruth play in a modern game of baseball and That's see true. how he'd fare. Against, I, against these new pitchers, especially. I mean, everybody's throwing something different nowadays. I, I would love to see if he could still swing the bat. When we come back, we have an update on new improvements for campus Wi-Fi. 
and a warning from Spokane's fire chief. When Murrow News 8 continues. Last summer, my new dad took me on vacation. First, we went deep sea fishing. I'm so proud of you, son. Then, we went on Thundershark three times. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Places, everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. 1 in 750,000. These passenger seatbelts were unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Snowstorms bring a danger not many have considered icicles. Spokane Fire Chief Brian Schaefer says that icicles, while pretty to look at, are far more dangerous than people realize. He advised residents to use precautions to remove them as soon as possible, preferably to let a professional do it for you. Icicles fall as they melt and can cause injuries or fatalities. Well, more on the, more on the weather. Those icicles really are dangerous, Ryan, and if we have the video uh, you could see the snowflakes falling this, this morning were insane. They were large and covering everything in a blanket of snow. And that's what makes it worse is that it had rained the day before and then frozen when it got below freezing last night. And so you have snow on top of a layer of ice, which just makes conditions worse to be walking or driving around campus. Um, and so the snow is supposed to have tapered off by now, um, but we're, we're not completely out of the woods because we have snow that showers that are supposed to come up this afternoon and they are along with that uh, we have more snow going on to the rest of the week as I showed you in the five day forecast so it's going to be icy and it's going there's going to be winds especially uh, driving up to Spokane wind blowing snow across the road so you're going to want to watch out for that when you're driving up there conditions can be slick and uh, basically just be safe whenever you're taking or going anywhere on the road Guests to the WSU Pullman campus will now have easier access to the school's Wi-Fi starting at the end of this week. The current time-consuming method of accessing guest Wi-Fi will be replaced by a self-registration program called ClearPass. WSU hopes to implement the system at all of its campus locations. ClearPass has already been successfully used at the WSU Spokane campus. I'll tell you what, that Wi-Fi is going to be very useful for a lot when a lot of people are on campus for football games in the fall. And definitely, definitely. When we come back, we'll update you on Amazon's new decision on their proposed headquarters in New York. And Malou Santos brings us a little closer to animals with an important job. When Murrow News 8 returns. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. We finally bought a place. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. So at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. 
How is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back. Yesterday, Amazon scrapped plans to build a new headquarters in Queens, New York. The decision came in response to New York critics opposing the nearly $3 billion in tax breaks that the company receives, as well as their anti-union stance. The cancellation will take around 25,000 jobs from New York. Amazon still plans to build a second headquarters in Crystal City, Virginia. You can find dogs everywhere in the Palouse. Many pet owners say they have a bond with their animal. A few dogs in Pullman can cost tens of thousands of dollars. Malou Santos has more on why these dogs cost so much money. This dog costs $65,000. She costs so much money because of her special set of skills. This puppy will go through a few hundred hours of training, and after a few months, a person in a wheelchair will benefit from her services. Meet Dan Marr. He works at Washington State University. Marr relies on his service animal, Indiana, that he tucks under his desk when he works. Marr and Indiana have a unique relationship. Marr says he appreciates the people that train the service animals. I think, I think where the credit really should be given is the trainers. They're amazing people. Places like Tail Wagon Adventures train service animals for organizations in the Palouse. Puppy trainer Esther Louis says she spends $2,000 and several hundred hours per year training dogs like Mercy, who will eventually serve a child with autism. She says it's all worth it. You know, I realized that I wanted to do something with some purpose. When we found this organization and understanding the need, I mean, there's a huge waiting list. And um, our first dog is now Place, and that kind of completes the whole circle as a volunteer. Dogs like Rosetta take a lot of time and energy to train. It's tough raising these puppies. I'm going to be honest with you. I definitely have established a really good bond with her. She's going to be tough for me to return, but it's a great feeling. I mean, knowing the service that I'm doing for an individual is the best feeling in the world. To find out more about service dogs, visit tailwagonday.com. Malou Santos, Muro News 8. A proposed bill is making comprehensive sexual education a requirement in K-12 schools in Washington. The new curriculum would include information and skills that encourage healthy relationships. The bill is currently waiting for approval in the Senate committee. Thank you for watching tonight. Be sure to watch our live newscast at nwpb.org slash MN8 and on Cable 8 at 7 and 10. Don't forget, you can also follow us at Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Drive safely and have a good night, Pullman.